You know, blue skeleton man, blue skeleton man. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Well, welcome back, everybody who's here. Um, let's see here. <laughs> I've got cleavage on my hat, if you didn't notice. Gotta love me some Elvira. Anyway, hey, I blame the movies is here. So here, let's see, get this thing started. I don't, I don't want to waste anybody's time because this one's going to be a lot of fun. I'm here today. If you're a big fan of this movie right here, yes, the Blu-ray from Best Buy, who had the documentary that inspired the movie. Uh, yeah, we're here to talk about Houses October Built, one and maybe two. We'll talk about the first one mostly probably, but here I'm here with Bobby Rowe, the director and also co-star. So... Let's see here if I can add him. You're not. Um, so that's requests. Come on, Shane. You know how to do this crap. You've been doing it long enough. Uh, might have to leave. Well, it's been real. <laughs> Invite. Yeah, he said he didn't see. I need to shave, everybody who's here. I need to shave. Hey, it worked. There we go, and that works. Sorry about that. Yeah, there's no camera icon for you. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah, I was I don't know a, little, why. a little behind. Take my wife out the door. Yeah, no worries. Let's see if my camera's going to stay here. Hold on. I'm doing this on a tripod, and the thing's acting up on me. Anywho, how the hell are you, sir? Doing good. Busy month, but all is good. How about yourself? Uh, not too bad. Uh, a little busy here and there, but, you know, life is life. <laughs> yeah, it's a good week, though. I'm excited for Halloween this weekend. Yeah, it's it's definitely been uh, supposed to be very Halloween-ish, too, like temperature and weather-wise, so I'm excited for that. Uh, yeah. Here in the Midwest, anyway. I don't know about uh, your location. Yeah, West Coast is usually all the same. Yeah. I, you live out in Cali, I assume, or? Yeah. Cali. I was thinking, because like, you, you you were saying uh, uh, Pacific Standard Time, 1 o'clock, so, you know, 1 makes 4 here. <clears throat> yep. So, uh, let's dive in a little bit for a little bit. Let's talk about this this lovely film right here. This is a beauty. I, I, I fucking love this movie. Thank like, you. This movie, like, I, I, like I've watched it a, a lot, and, uh, like, I've had people say, oh, the movie's it's, it's stupid. I'm like... Do you not love haunted houses? I mean, what's your problem? It's a great film. I think it's a, it's well shot for what the film is. I mean, it's like you know, it's like documentary slash you know found footage. It's a very well shot film. I think it's you know, it's definitely one of my favorites because you know it like I'm I'm a stickler when it comes to found footage films. So or maybe I'm not. Who knows? But <laughs> I definitely I, I definitely I was before we hopped on here. I was watching the uh, the documentary that's on here that was actually inspired the film itself which i thought was pretty cool because it has all the footage from when you guys went to the haunts themselves which i thought was pretty neat how like you incorporated that footage into the actual film which i didn't realize like so in many ways that that version is my favorite the the documentary like but yep. not the film but the documentary itself sure. yeah it's, it's very uh well it's very um well, abstract. I mean, I wouldn't say abstract, but you know, it's very raw and like it's you know, it's real. It's you guys. Yeah, I think is you know, it's fun to see because you know, that's all real. That's all real reactions. It's not you know, I mean, not that you guys were probably really even acting when you were making the film. It was still you guys, very much you guys, just playing yourselves. Not so, really. I mean, no, because like even Zach and I switch roles. Actually, if you see the movie you're referring to and the movie the the theatrical version we actually swap characters um so it's not us i mean it's just it's it's our names mm -hmm. uh that made it easier to direct everybody and keep it that way um keep the authenticity of it but uh no i mean sure there's things that are based on and we hammed up on what we know of each other but all in all uh they're still characters yeah still very much like you know well, I always find it funny, like, so many people, even, like, after Houses 2, they're like, oh, they're such assholes. They're doing and I'm like, they really think that's us, so. <laughs> I mean. But, like, yeah, because I, even I think I messaged you a couple times. I'm like, 
but like I was asking you like certain things like how is he still alive and blah 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 and like something like that it was just it was funny like it's like just like because uh, th certain things that happen in house one happened off screen that we didn't really get to see and then like house two came out or houses two came out and it's like the, the whole thing with Jeff I think I, that was the thing I was asking the most because it made made you think that they killed him almost sure but you didn't see that but you I mean there's Trust me, if you if you know Zach and I, we are so detail oriented that if we can, we're not going to leave a hole if if any way possible. And I think that we've we've done that. It may the, the hard part with screenwriting to to filmmaking is you don't have a chance to call it make an excuse or defend yourself um, because it's most of the time it's first somebody's first viewing and that's all you get. Yeah. Um, so you learn from that because sometimes you have to be blatant. I just hate being very on the nose. It's not fun for me. I'd rather have people kind of have a debate on the way to the, uh, the parking lot. So, um, with the question of Jeff is, or to anybody on any desk, you didn't see shit. So yeah. what you think you there saw doesn't mean that that happened. I mean, you didn't definitively see a damn thing. Yeah, it's very, very true. I mean, cause like, you know, had, it, had they, there been like, you know, like you actually seen maybe like the aftermath of say that did happen but you like you said you don't see anything you just hear them like something about ripping your his tongue out or something like that like oh pull out your tongue and say oh sure. and you're just you think like oh did they really just cut his tongue out but maybe they were just saying that just you know like the height and the you know well th this will help you i don't think i've ever told the story before but th that scene in particular uh, because it's about people and the way they interpret it. Without my permission, the studio put blood on the lens of that in post, and I was pissed because they were like, we need it because there's no blood in the movie on purpose for the most part. Yeah. And, and I said no because I knew what I wanted to do going into two. Um, I, I wanted – I didn't want anything like that because – I don't want to have to make excuses for stuff like that. And so I had it removed. Uh, it, was a, it was CG blood splatter that wasn't there. But the one of the – it was like a second editor at the time did it on his own, and that's just a no-go because that was messing up what we were trying to set up. No, yeah, that's not your – that's not what you wanted. And, yeah, that's – that would definitely have, like – At the end, we're making a giant haunted house. We're not – you want to watch us make a slasher movie? Cool. You, you're going to have the opportunity to see that. And that's full blown and hopefully kills you've never seen in your life. But that's not what houses is. And so for some of the people that uh, I think that it didn't resonate with, they wanted heads to roll. They want the slasher and there's room for all of that. I mean, I'm all in for a slasher haunt movie. I mean, uh, you know, I enjoyed haunt. I enjoyed the, some of the other ones they're just, they're just because we're about the same subject matter doesn't mean we're in competition. Yeah, for sure. It's more, I mean, it's really just about the experience. Like, you know, it's just, it's ultimately about haunted houses. It's not about, you know, murders that take place at all. I mean, no, it's, it's, it's literally just about going on a trip to go to haunted houses. I mean, that's sure. what, not, it's not out to be, like you said, a slasher film. Grant, there is, you know, the aspect of, you know, something sinister going on therein, but not so much as, you know, um, you know, violent or what have you. It's basically every year you have to one up yourself no matter what, and uh, in almost any occupation, to be honest, but especially in the haunt industry, sure, what yeah. is, what is around the corner? How creative can you be? How can you take it up a notch? Um, because you can't have the same haunt every year. That's not going to cut it. Um, and, and basically the, in the, the world of houses, like blue skeleton is trying to make what, they probably find the most terrifying uh, mobile haunted house on the planet. Uh, that's pretty, and it's pretty interesting that it's like, it's like you said, it's mobile. It's not in the same place every year, which I think is pretty, you know, pretty interesting in itself to be the most terrifying haunt and not be in one set place. Sure. I think the word haunted house, you think that, but I, I to me, a haunted house doesn't need four walls. It's, yeah. You know. That's true, because there's a lot of, you know, ho houses out there that, you know, they're not, like, within a house, technically, sure, so to speak. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I've worked at a haunted house myself, so, like, thinking about, like, when you were saying, like, one and up, like, going to that haunted house back in 2011, 
compared to like now it's just like it's a it's amazing how much that place is just evolved like they usually change like most haunts they usually change about 20 to 30 40 percent of the haunt per year just to like you know add some fresh stuff because of course there's like some stuff that's you know a lot bigger where they don't want to like strip that quite yet and you know it's that it's definitely cool to see the the evolution of what haunt haunted houses have become since you know just 10 years ago sure so it's so these haunts that you went like let's talk about these uh haunts in these in the movie for instance so you went the the footage in the film itself is the footage from the documentary where you went to the the, the houses and everything well the you talking about the the interviews we always refer to them as the chapter markers but all yeah. those interviews are all those interviews are 100 percent real uh, so because, like I said, I was watching the documentary, so it's like it's kind of cool to see all that footage. So you basically took all the interview footage and all like of you guys going through the haunts. Was most of that like just put into the film from the documentary itself, or was some of it like also, you know, shot for the film itself as well? Um. Well, there was two. There was two theories of thought on that, and. The problem that we did, and it's my mistake, but I still stand by it for the time, is we started shooting it in 2010, the original original, and I shot it in uh, standard def mm -hmm. on purpose. It was the cusp of HD, but at that time, there's channels like HDNet, things like that, where you would watch a waterfall for an hour because it was stunning and we'd never seen anything like that on TV. Um, but then when you see interviews or you see even documentaries that started, everything seemed too clean, too crisp. Um, and when we're trying to pull one over um, on people, it, I, I wanted to, I wanted to see all the blemishes. I wanted to look and feel like this was picked up a camcorder and went. Um, if I would have used HD, people wouldn't, I don't think, have taken the bait the same way. Now, the problem that comes with that that I just have to own is um, when it was bought by the studio, they wanted the big theatrical of it, and that's not going to play uh, on a 120-foot screen the same way. Um, yeah, and we just that, that was the world we lived in for those two years where uh, it was new technology. So we had to redo a lot of that. And so I kind of tried to make this amalgamation of, of both um, because the realism was one of the most important things to me. We always discuss that it's very, we get compared a lot of times to like Blair Witch and, and Blair Witch, again, a product of a, an amazing time, 1999, where everybody believed what they saw on the internet, but it was fake from frame one. Um, that was their intention. They executed it well. Ours was to do the opposite is to make frame one real all the way up till you don't know. Yeah. Um, and that was important to do it that way. And, um, you know, I've talked about it, but it, it, it's a funny um, kind of comparison. But Borat is more of the model that we took uh, and used. It doesn't matter that that's comedy. It was incorporating and interweaving a narrative as you were watching something. And the, the subjects didn't know they were in a movie, per se. Yeah. And I mean, that's what was so I, I find so unique about it is because it seen it looks and you know, it looks very real. Like, it looks like, you know, this is really you guys, you know, this isn't as it, like, it's almost not even a movie. Like you said, it's very documentary-esque. It looks like a, like, it's really, you know, a real, a real thing. <laughs> yeah. I think that's why I enjoy it so much. Cause it's just, you know, it's very, like you said, it's like you guys just basically going on this trip, just, you know, as yourselves almost, uh, obviously, yeah. we, earlier, but that's, um, so when you guys went on this trip, like, did you, like, obviously you went on this trip, like, it, was it the original idea to make a film of this, or were you guys just doing it willy-nilly? Oh, no, there's no willy-nilly. I mean, we've been planning it. We actually started this before even Paranormal Activity came out. Uh, we were just trying to think of a new way to tell a story, a new way to scare people. Um, and so, no, we had we had planned a lot of it. I mean... Sure, there's parts of it that are improvised, but but only for the reason of realism. Like I would, yeah. I would say to the actor, like A to D, this is where we need to start. This is where we need to end. And so B and C, I don't care what you do. 
um, because you're going to get thrown for a loop anyway, and you're going to be talking to somebody, and they're going to give you some off-the-cuff answer that you can't even imagine, and you're going to have to call audibles. I just need you to get me back to D uh, so we can move on with the same plot that we had you know, talked about. Um, so that was important. But in, in no way was it willy-nilly, but there was a lot of wiggle room on purpose to keep the realism. That's why when people – you know, naysayers that'll bitch about like reading Jeff's poem in the RV, right? Um, like, why? What's the point of that terrible poem? Da, da, da. No, the point of that whole scene and the reason I leave that fat on um, is because it's more important that it's an inside joke. We understand. I don't care that you, the audience, don't understand it. What you need to understand is that we do. And so, therefore, if we understand our inside joke, then we have a history. We are more tight knit. I just think it helps sum up a character. In, in three seconds as opposed to trying to tell you that oh we this was my ex-girlfriend for five years or this is my brother from and like going into all that no like, do it in a way that's organic and and the poem scene to me is, is probably the best example of something that if you're maybe you just turned it on you're not understanding you're like this is boring this is weird um but you have to see all 90 minutes together uh for reason there's a formula to that yeah, for sure. It's like it's kind of like that scene where they're, you guys are around the bonfire and that guy comes up behind you when he's sure. in the app. <laughs> yeah, that was just yeah, it was just a curious curiosity because like I just you know, like I wasn't sure if like you know you guys actually went on this trip like not having a film in mind and that this stuff actually like you know like happened per se. Right. Uh, yeah. No, there was always a directive. Gotcha. It was just it was just curiosity. I think it have been um... <clears throat> so out of coming out of houses one did you like say houses one you had just finished it they had released was there always an idea for two yeah there's i mean there's an idea for four um so i mean we we've always known what we want to do with it um and then after two we uh jumping into more narrative s standard features um but COVID, I mean, Zach and I had worked three years on a movie called Wicked Tale with the producers of The Walking Dead. Oh, wow. uh, COVID happens. We don't get to shoot last summer. Not special. It happened to everybody. Yeah. Um, and then we'll hopefully get that back on track for next year as well. But uh, yes, we know we know the whole arc of 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 what houses hopefully will be. Yeah, that's that's. I mean, because it obviously like it leaves it open for a third one too. Yeah. You know? eventually happened like just how it ended was just so like but like it was really bizarre and just like off the rocks like it was just it was just like holy shit like that just you know like the whole there was supposed to be like you know the check thing and everything and like how basically brandy led you guys to believe that she literally just blew her head off and everything it was very well done i thought it was really cool how it kind of well the double cross to me is the only way to kind of make it scary for all yeah. five characters. Like I, that's, that's the objective with that. It's, it is a haunted house in the open air, mm -hmm. but it was a plan. I mean, Aiken more to like, uh, ventures the game, um, yeah. as opposed to maybe some other horror movies. Yeah. It was just, um, yeah. The, uh, like the death scene, your guys' death scenes alone was just like really just, really like really well done like nice. <laughs> i couldn't imagine just walking through there and like being led to believe that that was real and then somebody within the haunt telling you that like when she sees like the blood packs in the gun and then the girl goes up behind her and whispers in her ear and says you know well you don't hear what she says but you can imagine yeah. and yeah the double yeah, i always wanted i dreamed of that being a continuous shot i i wanted that so badly but i think what a lot of people don't realize is that uh, budgets, money doesn't always buy like bigger special effects. Only thing, money or a bigger budget uh, buys you time, and that's the most important thing in in filming any movie. Is if let let it let me have another take. Let me have this uh, if you can do it. But blocking for something that intricate um, to be one continuous shot that probably would have gone for almost nine minutes. Oh. Uh, that's probably, it wasn't possible. Like we went through it, we're trying to figure out a way to do it, but it just wasn't efficient, unfortunately. So maybe something down the road. Yeah. I mean, maybe like some, another cut of the film, maybe. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, I, I think I remember it was a couple of years ago. You guys did like a giveaway, I think, on your page. It was like a, the, it was a two pack of the DVD, and I I'd won that actually. Oh, really? Right Dude, on. I was super excited. I, was like, I hadn't seen Houses Two yet, and I was like, oh, cool! Like I'll have Houses Two finally, so I can you know sit down and watch it. And I remember because it, it was signed by all you guys too. So that's I mean that's yeah. a really really cool collector's item. I have it in a box somewhere, like cool. put up, but. uh yeah, this well, one. hopefully one day we can release a version of it that it's all one movie. Because um, like, I always kind of saw it that way. That'd be cool. So, like, say, for instance, like, all four do happen, like, just one giant, like, collective edition. Started at 6 p.m. on Halloween night and ended at midnight. There like it. That, that, sounds like a, that sounds like a plan. We'll do it. Sure. Six years from now, seven years, maybe. Who knows? We'll see. <laughs> so, um... So jumping back to houses, like, is there a, a specific? Let me let me think here for a second. How I wanted to word this. Um, what was the what would what would have been the most challenging thing about making the film itself? Like, you know, we're at live like, sets. Live like, sets are tough because. You don't know what's going to happen, but you also, you get such a production value out of that, um, that you, that you can't buy. You can't buy even on a, a you know, a large, one of these, um, kind of event films to have what we had if you fabricated it for like the zombie pub crawl in houses too. I mean, there were 30,000 people dressed up as zombies. And so we had to shoot scenes in the middle of that. Um, and that, that was, that was really fun. It was tough. It was a lot of run and gun. But what we did notice is come later in that night, uh, the drunker people got around us or if somebody recognized us from the first one or things started to get weird. Um, yeah. And then we literally just kind of had to get, especially yeah. the girls, out of there. Uh, yeah. And so the later into that night, that got really, really uh, kind of tougher to shoot, tougher to pull off what we wanted. But, um, but the production value itself – I to, to me personally, you can't buy. Outstanding! Like uh, when you were talking about live sets, I instantly flashed back to two with where you did all those giant live sets with yeah. all the people. I mean, it was just super, super well shot. I thought I thought it was really well executed. And I could imagine just how chaotic that must have been just to you know pull off. Yeah, yeah it was important to us to not is is fantastic is so many of these haunted houses are, it was important for us and two to make sure that, uh, that you saw a different rendition of yeah. a haunted house. And I, you know, not just dark labyrinths cause they, they will start to blend together, especially if you're just POV, um, sure. with our group. And so we wanted to show different, you know, Halloween attractions to be honest. And so the 5k, uh, you know, the zombie pub crawl, things like that felt, felt a lot different. And and most people aren't going to be able to experience them. They were, they were the first time for us to experience. Yeah, you, you can definitely tell. Like, there's definitely a different tone with the second film. Like, a lot of people are saying, like, oh, it's just a re like a you know, yeah. a re of the first one. It's like, I, did you watch the movie? I mean, there's a lot going on here. That's it. Like, it's a the look, the feel. Like, it's definitely more. Like there's something you know, kind of, not, kind of lighthearted and like you know, fun about the first one. Whereas the second one, there still has that fun aspect, but there's always that sinister backlash in the first one, where you're like, something's gonna be around the corner to right. mess up all the you know the fun and you know, because like it's kind of like compared to films here, like kind of like watching Houses of a Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects, like yeah. Devil devil's rejects to me had like it was you know they were on the run it was like a completely more serious tone film whereas uh house of thousand corpses you know had that comedy aspect had that you know fun halloween aspect of it where you know and that's that's kind of how i compare the two films where like houses one was you know fun where houses two has the fun but it just definitely has a different tone than the sure. first for me anyways i don't know about everybody else Yep. Both highly enjoyable, of course, regardless of tone or not, that they're still very enjoyable films. I, for one, am excited to see where you go with the third one. I'm interested to see how that even happens, considering where it left off. Considering Brandy probably wouldn't talk to us ever again. 
Yeah, I'm surprised you sure. talked about the first one. <laughs> like the whole the whole, uh, the whole beginning scene where you guys go to talk to her. I'm like, I don't know how this movie even got made because there's no way like I would even be even consider going back to haunted houses after what happened. It's like, right. but of course you know money plays a big part in everything. So I mean, there's always a evil somewhere <laughs> that'll draw us back to something that we just won't do. Like, for instance, I mean, like Travis Barker, who was in a tr uh, a plane crash like 10 years ago, flew for the first time like a month ago, which is crazy because he almost died in that plane crash. Sure, I remember that. You tell me. So he hasn't flown in a decade since that? It's It's been a long, like, um, wow. yeah, because he like, if Blink, like for instance, like Blink-182, if they played shows, I mean, if they played overseas, they'd had to, they would have to get a fill-in drummer because he wouldn't fly. Sure. I can't say I oh. played. Yeah, that was pretty traumatic. <laughs> I mean, I, I remember reading because I have his biography, and I was reading like it got to that that section of the book, and like it was very detailed. Because I mean, like I don't think he himself like he he it was from his account that somebody was like you know writing it for. I don't know. Well, I don't I don't know how that works. I don't know how autobi biographies work because sometimes it says like this person with. Somebody else says, like, they're both writing it, I guess. I don't know how that works. There's but usually it, a ghostwriter. Yeah. And it was, like, it was just really haunting how he, like, described how it worked, or how the whole scene played out. And it's just, I couldn't, like, they're, the plane that they were in, like, it never even really got out of the air, apparently. Yeah. Like, it, like, got off the ground. And apparently, like, I think it was on fire before it even took off. And that's just... Yeah, to me, being able to live through something like that, like, I don't think I would ever be able to fly again, but he has, uh, I guess, a really good support system, so. Um, let's see here. So, diving back into, so what's going on other than, you know, because you released the two houses films. Um, yeah. You've released the two houses films, so you got, you were talking about another film that you kind of in the process of working on but of course like you said COVID happened what's um this new well that's when um so come march when that was kind of shut down of last year um we got the opportunity zach and i to do this movie isolation um it's an anthology that was shot completely in lockdown with uh 11 directors from around the world four directors from around the world so that was really intriguing and something different and kind of get a uh, a different angle um because it was a weird time. Like we shot it in uh, the time where it was scary to go to the grocery store. Yeah. And, <laughs> like you know, that, that was, um, it was important though to me, because look, anthologies are 50, 50, right? right. Uh, it was important okay. to have connective tissue to everything, but you know, you're working with a bunch of directors that are around the globe that you've, you've never worked with before. And you're trying to figure out a way to give this cohesiveness to it. Um, and the producer, Nathan Crooker, did a really good job of basically, you know, puppeteering everybody to kind of work together, still have their own voice, their own story they want to tell. Because I think the environment where you live was also making up, um, was a big character in everyone's story. Um, you know, we've got a director out of Germany, out of London, um, that kind of stuff. And, you know, they have these really incredible segments and what that time meant to them. Right. And, and, and that's, it's not, it's not a doc in any form. It's, it's hyper real. And there's obviously a horror element to it, but it was what was on their mind at the time. And so I think that you get a rare uh, kind of taste um, of the past 18 months and how that was for everybody. Um, and then when you have a fucked up head, like probably the other 11 of us do, uh, you, you might get some cool stories out of it. So hopefully we just got back. We, the world premiere was in London last month. Um, so Zach and I went out to that. That uh, went really well. Um, the response is great. Um, and you don't know with a movie like this, it's, it was kind of an experiment to start with. Yeah. And um, so to have that kind of all play out, come to fruition. And uh, we played a Scream Fest as well uh, last weekend for the North American premiere. So it'll come out on November 2nd um, everywhere, iTunes, Amazon. Yeah. Uh, and you can, I think you can pre-order it right now um, on iTunes. So very cool. I'll have to, I'll have to check that out. I'm very, 
very into I'm um, anything that you get your hands on camera wise I definitely want to check out I know nice <laughs> so you said it was called um isolation isolation okay what well, makes uh, makes sense well, it was, yeah. so is it like are they all like so it was shot by so are there like it's shot by 11 directors so are there like 11 like stories there's like, nine stories uh, there's a couple um teams there's a um, husband and wife team alex and kira out of london uh their segment's incredible it's really good um yeah so it, it ended up being 11 directors nine segments and other directors there's um denny gordon she, she does the jack ryan series um uh she's just doing a new show on amazon i forget the name of it um and then for a lot of people, the, the horror legend, like Larry Fesden, he's he's doing it. Uh, he does a segment out of New York. So it really are these these glimpses into everyone's life in some form. The, in, in a strange way, they're very personal. Um, but I think as a as a whole, they all fit together really well and give us a give us a time and place of, uh, you know, eight months in the future of how things could have gone sideways yeah. uh, in, in, in different places. So. Um, it, it's kind of a fun look back, I think. I, I, anybody that thinks they have um, quarantine fatigue, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> but that to me was more six months ago. Now there's this version of, well, okay, we're over it. Hopefully we are all seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And, and it's okay to look back on, on a horror version of this or hyper real version of it. Um, so I think people will enjoy it and it comes out right after Halloween. So that's the general basis of the film then. So like just the sense is of that the virus is mutating and the virus mutates differently in different cities and countries around the world. Gotcha. Very, okay. Yeah. Very cool. So it's very, you know, fitting. So that comes out November 2nd on VOD. Uh, right. Is there any like uh, physical plan for that? Or do you know? Well, we shot an incredible uh, amount of behind the scenes. Everybody did each team. Um, and so the last, when we were at Scream Fest, Nathan was telling us that that is in the process. It's just, I don't, it won't be ready for November 2nd. I know that. Um, but I do think when it does come out, I think it's got to be almost as interesting, even as the movie, to figure out how everybody used these incredible, like, devices or what they had at home. That was the rule, too, that you had to be used what you had in the household, your neighbors, like, it had to be in your vicinity. You had to, um, the rule was no camera phones. Um, and we weren't doing like a Zoom thing. And so as long as you followed those rules, um, you know, you, you got some really creative different stuff out of it. And, um, and watching people and how they literally said, well, I'm going to, there's a, there's a great scene out of the, uh, the London segment where, uh, without giving spoilers, there's teeth are involved. Well, the director literally had some of her wisdom teeth taken out, but she still had them um, in this book. So she would even use those as props when we weren't able to have all that stuff. And so there's, there's a lot of creativity that went through it. And there's a lot of movie magic that happened. I mean, in mine, a whale literally rolled up on the shore dead and we shot a scene around it. Uh, oh. It's pretty incredible. Yeah. <laughs> that is, that is pretty like, just like, uh, couldn't imagine just like the reaction of seeing that happen. It's like, so what do we do here? <laughs> uh, what we do is we go get in the wardrobe and we sh you just roll with it. It's way better than any other scene you had in your head when, just... <laughs> yeah, when you're granted a, a two ton whale that pops in out of nowhere and has the skitty, uh, the city skyline behind it, you shoot it. <laughs> That's not a prop. That's a real whale. <laughs> yeah. I was That's... asked too. Somebody was like, oh, those are incredible special effects. It was like, if I could pull that off, we'd have a whole different movie. Yeah, that, that that was free. That was a freebie. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a really really interesting film. Like kind of jumping from you know, like houses of houses October Belt, you know, horrors of you know haunted houses to real life horrors. I mean, sure. There's always there's there's horror everywhere. <laughs> so this is uh, so that's wrapped. Uh -oh. That's wrapped. Yep. Yeah. So is there anything between, like, uh, you were working on that? For some reason, I don't know if I read on your profile, if there was something else you were working on or had worked on between Houses 2 and the thing you, uh, Isolation, or maybe... There's probably a Wicked Tale if you're, I don't know, are you looking at, I don't know, Wikipedia or something? 
Like uh, that's think, probably one of the last ones that we released on, but that's the one that's put on was put on hold from shooting last summer. Okay, um, that's, what you were, that's what you were talking about earlier. I was a little curious about it. So what it, what does that one entail? Like, or do you not? It's a grounded. It's a grounded Grim Brothers tale, um, and Zach and I kind of took the mentality of if we're going to do this, let's put the R back in Grim and just make it as hardcore as these those original stories are because people. Okay. I think really misremember them because of the Disney films. But I mean, there's incredibly fucked up things that happen in that. Oh, I mean, yeah. sure. <laughs> you know, the, the stepsisters don't, they don't try on the glass slipper. They cut their toes off so it can fit. So they can be in center, like be Cinderella to the prince, like really insane things happen. And we kind of haven't seen all of that, um, yeah. uh, you know, on the big screen. And so we tried to figure out a way we did a, a way to keep that grounded and that it could happen in real life. I think that was important to us on there. So we, we have, I mean, we have our fill Like you can have the fantasy version of all these. Uh, but for us, we wanted to make it is, is how does this work in real life? Yeah, for sure. Well, that sounds exciting. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. That's, and we've, we've worked hard on that for many years. So so. That is still in the process or is that, yeah. Like that's on hold at the moment. No, that's still in the process. And we just got brought on to uh, actually rewrite a film. Um, I can't really talk too much about it, but that's what we've been doing the past month. Very cool. So, I mean, you've been, like you said, you've been rather busy with, you know, film and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's exciting. I mean, you know, staying busy, there's nothing wrong with that for sure. October's always busy, but this one has been Extra. incredibly busy. Yeah. It's been, you know, at least it's been, you know, a little more in the ways of normal you know, compared to what last year was, for say. Like, sure. I'm sure the West is probably, I don't know how it is for you guys, COVID-wise right now, but. Yeah, I mean, well, things are loosening up, but last, I mean, there, frankly, really wasn't a Halloween last year, so. Yeah, guys, yeah, we, uh, well, if that's, that's, it's just got really windy here for some reason. <laughs> I was like, is that the wind? It was howling, but, uh, yeah, like here in the Midwest, like it just seems like things have kind of died. Of course, you know, there's a lot less people where I live compared to, you know, say for say LA or something, wherever you're located. But like, yeah, Halloween this year has definitely been a lot different because there's actually been like stuff we can go out and do. Like, obviously, we got to take our daughter. We went to like this little, um, like, tra like walk through, tra like trick or treat trail, basically, where like you dressed up and people had like these little, it's got, they had like these little stations set up where they had like a theme and everything. It was real, it was real fun. And then our, uh, our local movie theater just had like this little, it was for the kids. It was like a little, they opened up one of the theater rooms and made it like a little walkthrough. It was, it was like a, a scareless haunted trail per se. And it was, you know, just something a little fun for the kids. It took like, you know, five minutes. To look up last year. I can't remember if it was Kit Kat or somebody, one of the candy companies made some kind of safe vending machine that was a, con a contactless vending machine that they were like putting in people's cul-de-sacs. And um, it was a good idea. It was really cool. I remember seeing pictures. I've never saw one in person, but you know, I think that's one of the most important parts. I mean, I think kids being able to experience and have Halloween uh, is very, super important. And no matter, um, no they're matter. the ones that got cheated a lot, you know? We've yeah. all we've all had our fill of Halloween, and you know we love it, but it's important for them, really important, yeah. I think. For sure, like I remember, like there was this how, like you know, trick or treat was pretty normal for the most part last year because I live in Indiana, so most people around here are like they're either they really care or they don't care. It's right. you know, it's just one of those things. But uh, the coolest thing I saw, this guy at his house did a really cool, and he had this giant tube that he would slide candy down into like the, like he would have the person at the end tell them to put their treat bucket right there. And they would like, this tube was like as long as this room is, which is That's cool. not very long, but you know, but still really cool. Like just to see them just like, you know, put time and effort into something like that. So they could, you know, help kids celebrate Halloween. And it was just really cool. I thought it was, you know, people got creative with it. Yeah. All around the, you know, around the world, really. I mean, you know, people had to, you know, get creative especially in places of, you know, that were a little more, um, man, I need to put my phone on private mode when I do these things, <laughs> but, uh,
people had to get creative when it came to Halloween last year because, you know, some places were a little more critical when it came to safety. <clears throat> anyway, let's see here. So we, we dove into houses one and two. We talked about your upcoming projects, which exciting as hell. I'm excited to see what you have in store for us with isolation and uh, your wicked tales. And of course, beyond like houses three, I mean, do you know, do you, will that be, you know, within the next, no announcements uh, today. No announcements today. Gotcha. Well, it was worth a shot. <laughs> it's definitely, and it's still, it's in your mind. It's, it's in your sure. mind. You just don't want to give it. You don't want to give us a crumb. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I, I, I understand, you know, it's like, you know, when something isn't even in come to fruition yet, it's like, I don't want to give anything away because, you know, you never, you never know. Right. Um, so, yeah. what, so what else? Well, the other you? thing, yeah, good call, Anna. I just saw that pop up. Um, we, Zach and I created a, a hauntsociety.com oh, cool. okay. as well. And we'd worked on that for a while, and then we really dug into it through quarantine. And we were trying to showcase all the haunted houses in the world. Um, I think that, you know, scare actors, the owners, everybody does such an incredible job. And I know, you know, houses is our love letter to Halloween, but we were trying to expand it, you know, for the whole world and kind of showcase that. Um, and so we worked really hard on trying to figure out the right way to do that. And so we have featured haunts throughout every state. Um, it was important to me too, to show even the commercials they do. I mean, some of these guys have short, um, like these incredible horror shorts and the quality is insane. They've spent a lot of money, spent a lot of time. And a lot of us don't get to see it unless you're searching out just one haunt that you were going to that night. Uh, yeah. We wanted to make it that it's in your hand. To, you can find all the haunts near you. Um, and then you can also see the ones that are, call it more highly rated. Um, yeah. sure. but, but I think also to be able to use that on, if you were going to Chicago for this weekend and you're not as familiar with it, but you know, you're there in September, October, look up those haunts, try to figure that out, what you'd want to do. The ones in Europe that are incredible that we've had the chance to experience some of those, but we are, none of us are that familiar with it. You don't even, you don't even know where some of them are uh, located. And so this kind of consolidates everything for you. Um, and so that's up and going. We launched that uh, middle of September. So that's been going well this past October. So. Well, I'll, yeah. definitely, have to, I'll have to definitely have to check. I wonder if you guys feature, cause I live in um, the town I live in is called Greensburg, Indiana. And we actually have like a little, like a little, I wouldn't even call it. It's like a, it's a haunt. Like it's in this guy's woods, basically. It's like a little, uh, it's called a hopeless hollow. It's like a little tra Like you basically, you get on this guy's tractor bed and he takes you down the hill into his woods. And it's, it's a haunted trail basically is what it is. And it's really cool. I'm just wondering if that's on there. That'd be I honestly, if anybody that's listening sees uh, that we don't have one of their favorite haunts or maybe even a more mom and pa that's smaller or whatever, yeah. yeah, please let us know. You can write us, uh, just info at Haunt Society, um, and we'll make sure to get that up because that is that is important to us to make sure everything is as current as possible and as vast as possible. Um, you know, we even tried, like, for the launch, we gave away one of the 12-foot skeletons from Home Depot. Yeah, That's yeah. Okay. so, you know, we gave that to um, – we ran a contest for that in September, and that was fun. That had a really good response. But we wanted to just make sure that we were introducing this to everybody who – you know, cares as much as we do about Halloween and, and has as much respect as we do for the haunt community. How, how, just by chance, how much does one of those things cost? What, the skeleton? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, with tax, the skeleton's like 350 bucks if you got a Home Depot, but you got no prayer. Like, it's they're sold out by July, and last year, I think they had one per every other Home Depot. Um, and they go for as much as two grand on eBay. Wow. Uh, but... They're pretty incredible. I mean, they're awesome. Um, I got a, a buddy that's got he he got one, and his house like he's he's got a pretty. I mean, he's not it's not a small house, but like this thing towers over his house. I'm like, sure, that's crazy. Like I I want to I I saw a picture of it. I haven't like because he lives probably an hour and a half away from me, so I don't really go and see him too. He's kind of he's a convention buddy, so I see him at you know conventions. Well, like, you should see somebody this year got got smart and they up the ante they have the 12 foot skeleton but they fabricated this giant skull and giant arm and hands and we're talking about like kong 
King Kong size, and he's grabbing the twelve foot skeleton, and it just makes him look literally like a miniature. Um, Gosh. It's really neat. But I mean, I, I remember it, it, the Today Show or somebody showcased it, but I'm sure it's easy for you guys to find. But it's worth taking a look at it. Kudos to that dude. For sure. Yeah, Hans, so I'll definitely have to look into that. Because I, I think I now that you were talking, because you said something about the 12-foot thing, I'm like, oh, I remember that now because I entered that contest. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, did not win, but that's fine. You got your DVD several years ago? You did? Yeah, I did win that. I was really surprised. Like, I got uh, the message. I'm like, oh, shit, I never win anything. And then my wife's like, that's, that's a lie. You always win things. I'm like, so? <laughs> I won this. Like I was super excited about it, and the fact that it was going to be signed, I was like, "Oh, that's cool." That's I mean, that's a that in in itself, that's a collector's item. That's like you're not going to be able to get that anywhere unless like you like when ter the movie Terrifier first came out before it blew up. I actually contacted like the director, Arthur Clown himself, uh, two of the other people in the film, and I actually wrote like sent them my copy. Like I asked them, I said you know, could I send my copy of my Blu-ray to you to have signed? And this was back before the movie got really super popular. And I actually, recently I did an interview with David Howard Thornton, who played Arthur Clown. And I told, I showed him a Blu-ray and he's like, oh man, you, I mean, I don't even do that anymore. <laughs> so it's like, to be able to have gotten to do that, sure. got that signed by somebody is just, I, I love doing that. Just like when people are really cool about it. So do you, yeah, you almost wish people dated things. Like, I mean, I just remember, you know, having anybody that you like, you love some movie, but you're one of the first to be on it uh, as a, like a collector of some of these it's things like that. I would love to have the date. So people, it's almost like, it, it, to me, it ups the value. Like, when they, if you when go they... get, you know, Bruce Campbell's autograph now, as opposed to, you know, early 80s doing Evil Dead, it's a whole different oh, yeah. ball game and a whole different value to me. Speaking of Bruce Campbell, I just got this in the mail yesterday. Very cool. And I I about jumped out. I, I wasn't wearing shoes, but had I been wearing shoes, I would have jumped out of my shoes because I never get the Chase Pops. And I, I pre-ordered this back when they announced it on Amazon. So, so of course, you know, it's like ten ninety nine for a pop figure. And that's for the standard one. And you have a one in six chance of getting this limited edition one. I'm like, okay, well, you know, I'll I pre-order it. Regardless, I wanted the pop anyway, even if it wasn't the chase, just because I love, sure. you know, I love Evil Dead. And it's the point, it's like to commemorate the 40th anniversary. And uh, it came in yesterday and I opened the box. And it was kind of like a, there was another instance where I actually pulled another chase figure. It was a leather face. And it was another one of those instances of the box was face down. So the pop was on, you know, face down. So I saw the back of the box and I saw the blood on his face. I'm like, hold up. And I just like looked at it again and I pulled it out. And sure enough, there was the bloody chase. I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> I was super like, now I got to get that signed by Bruce Campbell. It's cool. He's, uh, I met him. I, he was one of the first people I actually met at a convention, believe it or not. Like I've, I started going to conventions back in like 2014, I think it was. And they were having like a big evil dead reunion. I want to say for like, what was it? Well, they had like, it was like across the spectrum. Like it was evil dead one, two and army of darkness. And I mean, he was there. They had all sorts of people from the other films. And I had, I'd actually only seen the evil dead like once before then. I'm like, but it's Bruce Campbell, so I got to tell it. Like, it was my first ever convention, so I'm like, I've got to meet somebody big here. So I met him. I met, I think I met Michael Rooker. This was at Horror House. I don't know if I don't know if you've ever been to Cincinnati, like the Cincinnati area in Ohio. But I played baseball there several times. Oh, very cool. They had a, they have a convention there called. I don't know if you've ever heard of Horror Hound. It's a, uh, it's a magazine, but it's they they put on a convention. Uh, every, every March in, uh, Cincinnati. in September, it's generally in Indianapolis, but th they've been <clears throat> COVID kind of shut down the whole, this, this last convention they did back in September was almost like a makeup convention because the convention that was supposed to happen in 2020 in March 
got canceled like literally last minute as like COVID was blowing up. Like had it waited maybe a week or two, that that convention probably could have happened. But it it was their first show in like like two years basically. So yeah. it, was, it was crazy to finally be back in that kind of atmosphere, kind of just be amongst those types of people. Because I, I actually went to they there's a convention called Days of the Dead. And they did a show in Indianapolis in July of last year. And I'm like, how the hell are they going to have this show when, like, COVID is, like, at its, like, I mean, it, I don't even think it was the peak. But, I mean, it was still, like, very much a problem. Yeah. And they had this show. Like, people were like, they probably shouldn't be having the show. But they did anyway. And then people did show up. And, I mean, it was small. Like, you had to, I mean, obviously, you had to wear a mask the whole time you were there, which I figured as much. But like that was, I think I actually I met David Naughton from American Werewolf in London there, and I was really surprised him being a little older that he was actually even there. Yeah. But it was, you know, it was kind of cool being there, but it just didn't like feel right almost being there because of the circumstances. It's like the world's yeah. not right. I feel like I shouldn't be here, but you know, there I was. It's just so nice. Well, that hopefully everything goes back to good, back to normal. I miss, I've been to Comic-Con, I don't know, 12 years in a row and till last year. And um, it's just always a good time. It's something good to look forward to. So for sure. Yeah. I think next year we should all be back on track. I hope. Fingers crossed. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah definitely looking forward to this uh, wicked tale of yours and Zach's. Sure. Very. Uh, so has that, is it, is it filmed or is it still in the process of being filmed? Or is no, it it's just all written. I mean, we were just going to film it last summer. Oh, so, so it's, it's in like not even pre-production technically, I guess. Would that be mm -hmm. still in the writing process, but getting close to being able to, you know, get it, get the ball rolling. It's important to have a autumn atmosphere of that one. So yeah. um, we'll be looking at next fall. Next fall. Okay. For filming wise. Right. Okay. Definitely something to look forward to. And then, like we said, we were talking earlier about your new uh, anthology film that you're a part of, Isolation, for people oh. who tuned in. Sure. <clears throat> I got about uh, two minutes. I'm a, I got a two o'clock, but I'm going to push it. But, um, yeah, you got any other uh, questions or anything? Yeah, you know, I think I think we really kind of covered, pretty touched on a lot of good stuff. I mean, we touched on, you know, the Houses tr series, what's to come there, Uh what you've been up to otherwise and you know here there and a little bit of everything so i mean it's it's been a great little chat i appreciate you jumping on here with me yeah i appreciate you guys having us on and uh for anybody listening that wants to see it go to apple right now and just pre-order it but it'll come out next tuesday next tuesday if it's called isolation and definitely check out uh the haunt society is that is that like a is that a website like right yeah haunt society.com or you can, you can go to instagram um we keep that pretty pretty updated um or it's facebook i mean all across the board social media it's at haunt society cool so i'll, I'll definitely I'll, like below when i do a description for this and everything i'll add some links and sure. stuff appreciate it go to it for yeah sure. but yeah if you guys are looking for haunts this weekend and especially if you're in a new place uh They're hopefully up. it's a good tool for everybody uh this halloween and the upcoming absolutely and we're going to be just here not once a year type of thing. I, I want to keep it very updated because to me, I'm very fascinated by the holiday haunts, whether it's Christmas, the Valentine's yeah. Day ones are incredible. And a lot of people aren't even aware that their haunt does that. Um, yeah, they, so they, we're going to keep that updated throughout the year and they go down to their St. Patrick's Day and some have July 4th haunts. So uh, they, we want to make sure to highlight those. It's very, very cool how these haunts have like just kind of up the ante when it comes to holiday. Like the Christmas thing has really become really interesting. Like, sure. You know, just seeing all the Christmas stuff in a lot of these places, you know, they don't do a whole lot, like, but they add a lot of really cool stuff to like, man, like some things will just like people just throw a Santa hat on a jack o' lantern, but even still has that Christmas nightmare atmosphere. I don't, I don't, if it's January, you give me Halloween, I'm doing it. So, of course. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, have a good one. I appreciate you having me on. Yep. Of course. Thanks again. All right. Happy Halloween, everybody. Yeah. All right. Well, everybody, you heard the man, uh, haunt, hauntsociety.com for all your 
haunted house needs. I'll definitely be putting a, a link in the description below for people to go check that out. Um, again, um, he has a, um, he's a part of a new anthology. If you just joined, there's a new anthology film coming out that he was a part of called Isolation. And that comes out November 2nd on VOD. No plans on a V, uh, well, there are, I guess there are plans for a physical release, but it's in the process. So be out, look out for that as well. I'll probably try to maybe put a, maybe if there's a trailer or something I can find, I'll put that somewhere, a link to that as well. Um, again, thank you, Bobby, for joining on here and talking houses of houses, October built and beyond. Um, um, let's see here. So let's a little announcement. Um, for Fright Rags, they have a new universal one. Well, not a, not, it's not a, not a new. They have two new designs coming out tomorrow, actually. A new Dracula design. And gosh darn it, they love me. I don't remember what the other one was, but there's two new, two new uh, designs coming out tomorrow. So if you're a fan of the Universal Monsters, you definitely want to check that out. It's at fright-rags.com. Um, if you see something you like other than those and you want to buy something, be sure to use my promo code RReport2021. You'll get a 10% discount. And other than that, I really don't have anything else to throw in here. Um, I don't have, uh, let's see here, interview-wise. I've got some emails sent. I've got some messages here and there. Hopefully I get something set up here before too long. Some pretty interesting <clears throat> pretty interesting guests but other than that um, i think this will probably be my last made video for youtube until after halloween so uh <laughs> upset <laughs> no it's all good adam you're fine um but anyway so this is probably my last uh video before halloween so i want to wish everybody the happiest of halloween Z I'm sure I'll make some posts. If you've been following my 31 days of Halloween jams, I've been a little lackluster the past couple of days. I haven't been posting because I've just been kind of in a hodgepodge of hodgepodge of things lately, but we won't go into that. Um, so um, with that, I'll leave. Uh, I think that's all I got for today. So if you guys enjoyed this, um, hope you rewatch or if you're, just now watching this on YouTube, I'll be sure to like, and if you feel like the need, you like some of my other stuff, maybe subscribe. That'd be great. Um, until then, I'll see you guys on the next video, and have a good rest of your evening.